Some of the toughest kinds of signals to detect and trigger on are ghost signals. But before we get into showing how to isolate a ghost signal on the display of your oscilloscope, let's first define what a ghost signal is. A ghost signal is something that is typically intermittent, random, and infrequent. It sometimes shows up as a flicker or dimly lit trace on the scope's display. It's the kind of thing that keeps engineers up late at night. It can be like looking for a needle in a haystack. Hi, I'm Johnny Hancock, Product Manager for Keysight's InfiniVision X-Series Oscilloscope. Let's get started and I'll show you some examples of ghost signals. So here's an example of what I call a ghost signal. You can see, hopefully you can see it, a very dim trace down here. It's an infrequent glitch. It's actually a metastable state. Now I can turn up the waveform intensity and you can begin to see it more uh, more bright and more clearly. It's happening very infrequently. Most oscilloscopes won't show you this because of waveform update rate. This oscilloscope can update one million waveforms per second, and it shows you that needle in a haystack. Now our goal at this point is we need to isolate that so we can find out what's causing it. Now, the way you isolate signals typically is to use advanced parametric or violation triggering. We could do that, but an e easier way is to use this scope's zone trigger. So I just draw a zone box where it intersects those infrequent edges and say, must intersect, and then it locks right on to those narrow glitches. So here's another example of another ghost or something infrequent that shouldn't be happening. If you look closely here, you can see a bright rising edge, and then you see a dim one that kind of takes a dip. This is what's called a non-monotonic edge, and I can tell it's infrequent because it displays it more dimly. Now again, if I want to see it more clearly, I can increase my trace intensity, and again, what I want to do is I want to isolate just the bad edge from the good edges, so then I could debug and troubleshoot and find out what's causing this dip in the signal. Again, I could use violation triggering, but what's easier is zone trigger. I draw a zone box that intersects that infrequent anomaly and press must intersect, and now I've locked on to this ghost. So here's our third example. This is a series of uh, digital pulses and you can see some faint traces here in the middle. This is a normal high level. This is a normal low level. But you can see in here, we have some signals that should be high, but they're not going to the full high level. And we have some that are low, but not going to the full steady state low level. So we call these runt pulses. So if I want to trigger on runt pulses, I have parametric run triggering, but again, zone trigger is the easiest way to lock on the, onto these infrequent signal anomalies or ghost signals. So I'll draw a zone box here, intersects that ghost, and say, must intersect. Let me turn my waveform intensity up. Now I can see that I've got one high level runt that's this wide, and another one that is this wide. So I could draw a second zone box. So I've got two levels of qualification, say, so for this one, must not intersect, and it locks onto the narrower one, or I could change it to must intersect, and it locks on to the wider one. I just showed three examples of how to use zone trigger on key sites and Finivision oscilloscopes to quickly isolate on random and infrequent events or ghost signals. If you think you might have learned something in this short video to make you more proficient in performing oscilloscope measurements, I invite you to view our other InfiniVision Oscilloscope Measurement Tips videos. To learn more about Keysight's InfiniVision X-Series oscilloscopes, go to the URL listed on your screen or contact one of Keysight's authorized distributors. Thanks and Simplify.